Hello, everybody, and welcome to me just screwing around. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a little obsessed with this thing? Um, I'm quite enjoying it. I have made the last three videos about the Oculus Rift, and I probably will make more, assuming I can find good games that will work with the DK2. Um, but I am enjoying the, enjoying the hell out of it. Um, I don't know if I've got my money's worth out of it because it did cost me $375 with shipping. Um, but I'm having fun with it so far. I think, I think, uh, once, like, Half-Life 2 is updated to work with the DK2 and quite a few other games are actually with the DK2, I'm sure I'll enjoy the hell out of it. Um, I think it will be definitely be worth the money. And I can't wait until I get it. Or... Yeah, I can't wait until it happens. Um, I'm quite glad that I got it. Tell I'm a little out of it. I was just recording the last episode that was on my channel, the one with the uh, ride, the, the, what was that called? Not Chillin' Space. Uh, cyberspace, that game. Um, still a little upset about that. My stomach still hurts a bit about that. Um, so, yeah few updates of what's been happening to me recently. Um, I'm going down to Colorado, Denver specifically, come October for the Great American Beer Fest. I'm not actually going to the Great American Beer Fest. Well, I might one day or another. Um, at least one of the days I'll probably go to the Great American Beer Fest because, you know, I'm there. But I don't drink beer and I don't particularly care about beer. Uh, the only reason I'm going is because my dad and a bunch of people he knows are going, and I'm pretty much the guy that drives everywhere, so I'll be driving down there. Um, so I'm going to have probably a day or two of absolutely nothing to do in the middle of Colorado, or wherever Denver is. I have no idea. That's why I own a GPS. So, uh, any advice on what to do while in Denver, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, I hope I get to see the mountains. I might have to go driving to see the mountains. I don't know. Though I just had a horrifying thought. I don't like driving in big cities when they're very busy, and I can imagine around the Great American Beer Fest is going to be kind of busy. Uh, yeah, anyways, um, I might record a video while I'm down there. I don't know how well the GoPro will go will work. Uh, I'm using, you know, this expensive ass microphone here for all my recordings now. So it's, uh, you know what? I have no idea. I have no idea what's going to happen when I get down there. That's several months away. Uh, wait, August, September, October. Okay. Two months away. Oh, we're actually getting pretty close. Um, but anyway, so my dad is planning this entire thing. And he decided that instead of taking one of our vehicles, like I drive a Jeep Liberty, he drives a, a Evo, a something Evo, I don't know what make that is. Um, my stepmom drives this big, giant, freaking Volvo SUV. Um, but instead of taking any of those cars, my dad decided, well, why don't we get one of those conversion vans? I, of course, made a joke. I'm like, why don't we get an RV? <laughs> But he's like, well, why don't we get one of those conversion vans? You know, those really fancy vans that have a l whole bunch of leg room and, uh, you know, have the TV and video game systems and computers and all that fun crap. Why don't we get one of them and get, drive it down? Uh, so c last week we drove up to Ohio and bought a conversion van. And we bring it down here and then we're retrofitting the conversion van. Okay, so the conversion van is a Ford E-150, which apparently doesn't have a lot of instructional videos like on YouTube or anything about it. Uh, but apparently it's really common to be retrofitting this kind of thing because an E-150 is built on the same chassis as an F-150. And apparently an F-150 is really common to modify. Okay, I'm not much into the car thing. I... The only thing I really know is my old uh, Jeep Cherokee that I had is actually like a perfect thing to modify into a rock crawler. 
that's about all I know about car modifications outside of very, very simple stuff like replacing the radio and uh, replacing the air filter because I always get aftermarket air filters to up my gas mileage a little bit. Uh, but uh, so we're going through this thing. We have the entire thing like gutted because um, the TV that's in it is a it's widescreen but it's like low def, like standard low def. It, it had S video as its highest quality thing. And it was S video that was using converter from the S video connection to a standard RCA composite connection. So it's, yeah, <laughs> it's a crap TV. So my dad bought a 1080p high def TV um, and he was debating on it. He was talking to me about it. He's like, oh, should we get one of the 3D TVs? Because we can get a 3D TV that fits. Um, and he's actually emailing me about that right now. <laughs> but uh, he's like, well, why don't we get one of those 3D TVs? And I'm like, okay, we're going to be in a moving van. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm never going to watch the damn thing because I get seriously motion sickness. As I've pointed out in several episodes already, um, my inner ear is overly sensitive, so I'm not going to be watching crap in that van. Um, but seriously, why would you get a 3D TV for a van? Um, but my dad's a little kind of nuts when it comes to uh, modern tech. You know, like I am with the whole Oculus Rift thing. Uh, whew, that's going to be fun on the audio. I just smack the Oculus Rift into the mic stand. Uh, gotta be careful when doing it. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, he was having fun with the TV idea, and we're talking about adding all of the, you know, inputs like HDMI, SD, composite, component, um, what is it, RF modulator, so basically, uh, coax connector. <laughs> I still find it hilarious. So we're thinking about, there's a panel on the driver's side of the van, because there's no door on the driver's side of the van in the back. It's only on the, it's a big, one of them big sliding doors on the passenger side. But on the driver's side, there's a panel there that's just kind of for decoration right now. It's a faux wood grain panel, about yay big. Uh, and I made a joke about making it into a flip-up thing, where if you flip it up, there's all of the connectors underneath it, uh, like USB ports, SD cards, that kind of thing, just for shits and giggles. He's going to go for it, um, because he wants to have some really, he wants to have some fun with it, uh, to the point where you can plug in an old Artari into it. I wish him luck with that one, but it sounds like it's going to be fun. Uh, but that's not the only thing we're doing with the conversion. He's thinking about replacing all of the speakers in there. Um, but he's looking into the speakers that are already in there in case they're actually worth keeping. Because there were two amps in the ceiling of this thing. We haven't figured out what the second amp was for. We know what the first amp was for. It's a SRS surround sound system. Um, and there are four speakers in this thing. And we're trying to figure out if there was a subwoofer, but I don't think there was a sub in the system. So he's thinking about adding a sub into the system, which ought to be really interesting. Um, and that's just the ceiling. Uh, the, uh, the radio is a stock radio, and it's broken. Uh, one of the buttons was apparently hit far too hard and shattered. So he's going to pull out the stereo, and he's got a new one to go in. A big, giant, full LCD Android stereo system that, uh, you know, it's touchscreen. It's got GPS. It's got the radio. It's got CD. Um, it doesn't support satellite, but it's got the inputs for satellite, like you can add it on later. Though I pointed out with what he's going to do, is there any real point in putting in satellite, considering that he's going to wire the van with Wi-Fi. <laughs> and he's going to use his phone as a portable uh, hotspot so that we can wire the van up for internet connection. 
which is just hilarious. So the Android device, we don't have the 3D dongle for it, but it's going to connect through Wi-Fi out to the internet, so it'll work on GPS and everything like that. And my dad's got Verizon, um, and Verizon seems to work almost everywhere we go, so hopefully it'll work the entire way down to Colorado. But if it doesn't, Google Maps is actually fairly smart to cache all of its stuff in memory so that if you do lose connectivity, it will keep working um, unless you take the wrong course or something like that. Then it might be a problem. Uh, there's also a built-in GPS app that has an SD card with all of the maps on it that are relatively up-to-date. So at worst, it's going to be like a Garmin or a TomTom. It's gonna be. It's gonna work. It'll work well enough, but it won't have up to the minute like traffic and weather and you know all that stuff. It'll work. Um, and he's going to integrate all of this. So we're gonna have like an in compute in car computer and everything running full Windows. We're gonna run XBMC as the primary interface. But he was telling me yesterday how he wants this computer to be a developer system. So like if he's working, so if he's in the back and somebody else is driving, he could be sitting there typing away and working on the computer. Um, I think he's nuts, but he doesn't get the motion sick thing like I do. Uh, I inherited that from my mother. Uh, my sister got the lack of motion sickness from my father. Um, I did not. I have very sensitive ear in your ear. I get very sick very easily, so I will probably be volunteering to drive a lot. Whew. Yeah, so he's going to integrate all of this. We're going to have a media center system. We're going to have a Blu-ray player. Literally, it's going to be a separate Blu-ray player. Like, in the van, there's the TV, and then there are two things in the console on the ceiling. It's a radio and a Blu-ray player. And he's debating on what to do with the radio because we don't really have a need for it. Um, I suggested, why don't you just put the radio back that's already in there? I mean, there's space for it. We have nothing else to put there. May as well leave the radio there. Um, so he's thinking about that. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be the, a dedicated Blu-ray player. It's going to be a dedicated radio. The computer is going to go under the front seat where we have easy access to it. Uh, in case something breaks. Plus, uh, in the ceiling, it gets insanely hot. So you don't want to put a computer up there. Um, I don't know the stats on the computer that he's going to put in there. He has the computer. It arrived today. Um, we haven't played with it yet because it needs a 12-volt power supply. So we'd either have to wire it into the car or we have to wait until we get the 12-volt adapter that he got to play with the radio. <laughs> Um, so all we'd have to do is wire it up into the radio. Uh, that's all going to be connected through HDMI. Yeah, I don't know how long he's going to do that, but it's going to be an entertaining, entertaining experience to say the least. He's also planning, I don't know how he's planning on doing this, but he's also planning on integrating the Android, uh, console with the TV. So we can put the stuff that's on the console to the TV. I don't know how he plans on doing that. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting to find out. But by the time we're done, this thing is going to be wired. It's going to have, like, everything. And it's going to be ridiculous. We were going to record this. Um, because there aren't really very many... Uh, like I said, there aren't many instructional videos for this kind of thing. But... Then I sat down and explained to him the effort it takes to actually make an instructional video. Uh, I mean, it sounds like it's a basic thing. Uh, you just start the video and you just go through the steps. It sounds like a very, very basic thing, but it's not. You have to sit down. You have to plan out where you're going. And if, you're, if it's an instructional video, you have to know what you're doing. We're winging it. We are completely winging it. We have no idea how to take this thing apart. We got lucky. Uh, we were at the point where we were going to rip the fabric off of the ceiling just so we can see how to take the bloody thing apart. But we got lucky and we found that it was the fabric was folded up into the ceiling 
and overlapping with other pieces of the ceiling. And we only have to pull the fabric out, which uh, showed a bunch of other screws that we unscrewed and the whole ceiling came down. Turns out it was made out of cardboard. Who knew? And we took that, yeah, once we took that down, it's actually significantly easier to find everything and take everything apart. So, yeah, that's where we found the second amp. We didn't know there were two amps up there. Now there, now we know there are two amps. We actually took the amps down because he's planning on replacing them with just one amp. I'm taking the other amp, and I'm going to try wiring it up to my stereo in my car because I have a nice Bluetooth stereo that I had in the old Cherokee that I pulled out, and I want to put it in my car so I can attach my phone because, you know, it... That's how I listen to most of my music. I don't listen to it on CD. I listen to it through my phone. And right now, I have an antenna, antenna interrupt. And it works. It works well enough. But I have to remember to take the phone out of the dock and plug it in. Or take the phone out of my case and plug it in and all that fun stuff. And sometimes I forget and I remember in the middle of driving and that doesn't work. But with the Bluetooth thing, the car turns on, the Bluetooth turns on and it connects instantly to my phone, and I can control everything with my watch, which is perfect since I uh, I would lose the steering wheel controls. I have steering wheel controls for my stereo right now, and I would lose them. But getting back on topic of the van and all the fun that we're having just preparing for this drive down to Colorado, um, so yeah, that's going to be the whole media center system. It's going to be really interesting. Uh, but that's not the craziest part. Okay. The craziest part is how he reacted to the van not having like a backup camera. All of the other vans he was looking at, the conversion vans he was looking at, all had at least one camera. In fact, I think all of them had three cameras. There was a backup camera and there were two side cameras to check your blind spots. Now, it's really useful, but the limitation on those cameras, the backup camera, you had to be in reverse to see it. The two side cameras, you had to turn on your turn signal to see it. The problem with that is, well, what if you want to check your blind spot and then turn on your turn signal? Because that's how I drive. I check my blind spot, and then I turn on the turn signal to make the lane change. Uh, that's just how I do it. Well, that's apparently how he drives as well. So he wants to make it so that you could push a button on the console, turn on the camera, and then turn on the turn signal. You know, that way you can check your blind spot. Which is great because uh, the blinds in the back, they go down and you can't see. You can see, if the blinds are up, you can see the blind spot just fine. It's no problem. There are also two mirrors that if you angle them right, you can see the blind spot. And it's, you know, so the cameras are a little nuts. But... So he's adding a camera to the back. He's adding two cameras to each side, and he's adding a camera in the front as well. Now, these aren't just regular low-light cameras. These aren't infrared cameras. They're thermal cameras, okay? Like, if you ever watch the Mythbusters and they're playing with the thermal cameras, they're playing with, like, the, the thermite and stuff like that, and they got that really weird, colorful camera that uh, that actually shows you the heat off of the off of the object you're looking at instead of the light amplified it shows the heat uh technically that's infrared but it's a different like band of infrared or something like that but it shows the heat those are the kind of cameras he's putting in these are full thermal cameras that are actually smart cameras they're smart enough to tell you if what you're looking at is a person or not um, and it was really interesting how he was telling me how he got these things. When he got them, he had to sign government documentation stating that he wasn't going to use these things to make missiles. Okay, he's planning on using them in a car. It works, it works, and all that fun stuff. But he he told me the model of them, and I don't remember the model. Uh, and I had never heard of them before. But when he told me that he had to sign government paperwork, I was afraid to Google it. <laughs> I did, and it turns out that they're just cameras. You can buy them 
uh, they're residential cameras. They're not some special thing that only special people can get. You can just buy them. Uh, you probably also have to sign the documentation, but it's just a thing. I mean, the company that makes these cameras does make military-grade stuff, but they make residential-grade stuff as well. Uh, from what I understand, these cameras are specifically designed for cars, and there are a couple of model of cars out there that have these kind of cameras built in stock, but these are like high-end cars that are like six figures or something like that something absolutely ridiculous we got this van cheap uh relatively cheap we got really lucky with this thing it's a very good condition van we got it with very low miles it's like forty-two thousand miles on this van it's a conversion van it's a 2004 conversion van it only has forty-two thousand miles on it we drove it the entire way from ohio and had no problems whatsoever so i'd qualify that as a win so, yeah, we're going to have some fun. Though, I think, for me, most of the fun is going to be before the drive to Colorado. Because we're going to be fiddling with the conversion van. However, on the days that I don't want to deal with going to the beer fest, that might be an interesting place to hang out and just play games. I don't know. Like I said, I'll probably throw up some videos. I'll play with the GoPro. I've got multiple cameras I can play with. I actually... It's over there out of reach, but I have a... Um, I don't know. It's like military kind of stuff, um, but it's a belt and a thigh pouch. Uh, think Angelina Jolie in the Tomb Raider with her belt and the holster on her thigh that she straps to her thigh. Like that, but not a holster, it's pockets. I use it to carry all my camera equipment. Uh, it works. It works well. It's maneuverable and that kind of thing. So I'll be taking that with me, and I'll be recording stuff down there. Um, I'll be recording the first time I actually get to see real mountains. I'm mostly living in the Northeast, and yes, okay, we have mountains over here, but they're not really noticeable. So this will be the first time I get to see something like the Colorado Rockies. This will be actually be the furthest west I ever drove. Unless Chicago is further west. I failed geography. Can you tell? I, I, I suck at geography entirely. So, yeah. I'm, I've been rambling on a while. I'm kind of excited about all the stuff that I'm doing. So I'm going to end the episode here. Uh, I think I did pretty good. Uh, we're at 23 minutes of recording time. So yes, I think I did pretty good. And I think this will fit well as a I'm sorry for the very short Oculus Rift video that I made. But that's what I get when the games don't actually have much in them. They're mildly entertaining. They show off what the kind of what the Rift can do, but not really. Um, so yeah, uh, figured I'd throw up something that people can watch that aren't using the Oculus. So I'm really excited for the release of that, and I hope a lot of other people are. It's a shame that a lot of people got really, really pissed off by the Facebook accu acquisition. Accusation. I almost said accusation. I'm really disappointed that a lot of people got pissed off by the Facebook accusation. There we go. Yeah, acquisition. Uh, you know, like Notch at Mojang was building in Oculus Rift support into Minecraft. And then he heard that Facebook was buying Oculus and ended development for that right then and there. He pointed out that there is a mod that supports it, but it's not going to support the most recent version. As far as I know, it only supports 1.6.4. I haven't actually looked to see if it updated. I'll have to take that, check that out. The next video you guys might be seeing might be me playing Minecraft with the Oculus Rift. Um, but I would have been a lot happier if Mojang would have put that built in to the system because, you know, that's one less mod that has to be installed. Uh, that would especially be useful for the Quest for Creative series, which I've kind of neglected recently because I'm not, it's one of my rules, I'm not allowed to add or remove mods or change the mods. It has to be as downloaded. So I could never do Quest for Creative with the Oculus. 
And I'd have to say that's not terribly a bad thing. <laughs> Though bouncing around space might be entertaining. I don't know. I'll have to play with it. So, yeah, I'm going to end the episode here. Um, I'll just, you know what, I'm just going to shut up right now and I'm just going to send my closer. So, before I ramble on any further, I'll say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun. And I really want to keep talking, but I need to shut up because I don't have any train of thought whatsoever. <laughs>